harmful algal blooms are something that we're seeing um, more and more frequently across the country and the world. This is driven by changes in warming temperatures as well as um, increasing nutrient loads to our waters. And so, you know, there are some aspects of algal blooms that we can really um, manage and some that are harder to manage. There are a number of effects of algal blooms on users of Utah's waters. One of those is the aesthetic effect. There are also irritative effects, skin irritation and eye irritation that result from contact with large concentrations of cyanobacteria cells themselves. The toxins that can be produced by cyanobacteria, and those can range from neurotoxins to liver toxins, and really can vary over time and across a bloom. Toxins can affect stock watering, so we worry about livestock, drinking water, and of course recreational users as well. Algal blooms can affect the taste and odor of drinking water, and can also affect the pH and the oxygen concentration. What we're seeing on a local scale is our nutrient enrichment. So that's just excess levels of nitrogen and phosphorus going into our water bodies. The sources of nutrients are agriculture, our wastewater treatment facilities, us, our waste uh, after it's treated. The Division of Water Quality really has the primary role in addressing is nutrient loads to the state's waters. Um, we have a broad nutrient program to reduce um, the sources of nitrogen and phosphorus from, from all sources, from our point sources, those would be our regulated discharges that include wastewater treatment plants and some industry. We also have programs to reduce the amount of nitrogen and phosphorus that comes in the form of stormwater um, from your lawn fertilizers and um, other sources in the urban landscape as well as reducing the amount of nutrients that come from agricultural sources. So we're working on all of those angles. A couple of years ago, we started a response program, meaning that if someone reports a bloom, uh, a bloom consisting of algae, and it's usually a blue-green in color, um, if they report the bloom, then we respond. And the way we respond is uh, by monitoring the water body, see if it has toxins, because uh, harmful algal blooms, these algal blooms can produce toxins. And, uh, and then we give that information to the local health departments to make advisory decisions, meaning if you're recreating and there's presence of a toxin, usually it'll give a, a warning or a danger. Warning meaning limit your recreation, um, primarily swimming. Uh, in the water body and danger, of course, is a closure. This year, 2017, was uh, we had probably a wider coverage of cyanobacteria blooms or accumulations um, uh, compared to last year, even though we had a great snowpack this past winter. But Utah Lake um, had a bloom this year. It was not, um, it came earlier than the bloom last year. We were a bit surprised by the length of the bloom and the, the breadth of the bloom, um, both last year and this year. This summer we start sampling Utah Lake in May, and in June uh, things start getting worse, specifically areas by the middle of Provo Bay, which is one of my sampling sites, had a surface scum and had the green pigment, which is lots of chlorophyll in the water column. And from there, things start moving through the water column northeast of the lake. And when winds picked up, it almost became all over the lake, the algal bloom. So last year, the Utah Water Quality Board uh, authorized a million dollar grant to the Division of Water Quality to conduct a study to really understand how nutrients affect the, the uses of Utah Lake, and that includes the recreational uses as well as the aquatic life, the fish, um, and the agricultural um, uses of Utah Lake. So for the last year, we've been working with the Utah Lake Commission and local elected officials to launch the Utah Lake Water Quality Study. Um, this study will be um, conducted through a steering committee that's made up of representatives from our stakeholder groups in Utah County um, that have an interest in a healthy Utah Lake. Um, the steering committee will also seat a science panel to help guide studies um, to really help us understand the, the relative importance of different pollutants on the uses of Utah Lake. We'll especially be looking at um, nitrogen and phosphorus and how that um, plays into the algal blooms that we've seen in Utah Lake as well as some of the other water quality issues. So,
policies is important for us to be kind of nimble and flexible and adapt to issues as they arise. And it's clear that harmful algal blooms are one of those issues facing Utah today.